ارزونا 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 Indeed, as always, we begin by praising Allah Azza wa Jal. We recognize that without His help, we cannot achieve anything. We ask Him to aid us. Allah is the only one who can forgive sins, so we ask Him to forgive us for all our mistakes, shortcomings, and sins. Amen. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He helps us and He aids us, and we seek His protection and His refuge from the evil of our intentions and our wicked deeds. Amen. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides to the straight path, we know no one can lead that person astray. And whoever Allah allows to go astray, no one can guide that person. And I bear witness that there is no God who deserves to be worshipped except Allah. He is alone, he has no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the slave and messenger of Allah. Azza wa Jal. Amma ba'd. After praising Allah and thanking Him for gathering us on this blessed night, in this blessed place, a place where Allah Azza wa Jal is worshipped, I also would like to show my gratitude and thankfulness to Al Hirz Institute, Sheikh Urkasha, and the those who are involved with this masjid for allowing us to have such talks in this place. May Allah reward all of them, protect them, their families, Amen. and make their way to Jannah easy upon all of them and us. Ameen, Ya Rabb. Ikhwani wa akhawat, my brothers and sisters, I want to remind you all before Sheikh Orkasha begins his lesson of we all know that we live in a troubled time where many people are lost and continue to be lost, subhanAllah. <coughs> we live in a time where people are confused, they don't know what the truth is, and I'm even talking about Muslims. But alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has preserved the Qur'an, no doubt. And He has not only that, preserved the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the way of the companions, and their students, and their students, all the way till now, we have a chain, alhamdulillah, for this. So that if we ever become lost, if ever we become confused, we know the way out of that confusion. We know the way out of that darkness and into the light. One day, as was narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, where he said, خَطَّ لَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ خَطًا That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he drew a line for us. So imagine they were walking with Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, and imagine he had like a stick or something and he drew a straight line on the ground. ثُمَّ قَالَ Then he said صلى الله عليه وسلم, هَذَا سَبِيلُ اللَّهِ This is the path of Allah. Then Ibn Mas'ud said, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam خَطَّ خُطُوطًا عَنْ يَمِينِهِ وَعَنْ شِمَالِهِ Then he drew lines to the right of that line and to its left ثُمَّ قَالَ Then he said هَذِهِ سُبُلٌ عَلَى كُلِّ سَبِيلٍ مِنْهَا شَيْطَانٌ يَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ He drew the other lines and he said these are other pathways and upon each pathway is a shaitan, a devil calling to it. Calling to what? Calling to the hellfire. Calling to shirk. Calling to bid'ah. Calling to misguidance. Calling to sinning. Calling to every other way except the way of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He made his point clear to the Ashab that there is one way and that way only will save you. So a person may ask then, we want more clarification. What is that way? In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said clearly, 
إذا تفرق هذه الأمة على ثلاث وسبعين فرقة. He said this ummah will split into 73 different groups. Allahu Akbar. And some of the ulama, what do they say? The, it's more than 73. But these 73 serve as the heads of these groups. And the Prophet وسلم, described them as such. He said, Kulluhum finnari illa wahida. He said all of these groups, all of them, every single one of them is in the fire of hell except for one, subhanAllah. And how many groups do we see from the beginning until now? After the death of Rasulullah until now, we've had so many groups, the Jahmiya, the Qadiriya, the Mu'tazila, and so on and so forth, including today. Every group saying that, follow me, follow my shaykh, follow my way, follow this, follow that. And none of those ways are in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he clearly stated all of them will lead a person into the hellfire except for one. And then the ashab of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they asked him. They said, ma hiya tilka al-firqa? What is this group? What is this group? Because they wanted to know and this was the way of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They wanted to know the way. Sami'na wa ata'na. That was their minhaj. We hear and we obey. Whatever you tell us, Ya Rasulullah. We want to be part of that group. You just tell us. What are their characteristics? Who are they? What do we need to do? And we will follow it immediately. Not like today in, in this time. People, they will come with every excuse. Yes, but this. Yes, but that. Anything except to follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to return to that way. That way of whatever the Prophet ﷺ says, that is our way. No need to ask any further questions. So the Prophet ﷺ, he responded to them. He said, What me and my companions are upon today. So what does that mean? This means that in your acts of worship, if you restrict them to how Rasulullah did them and how he taught his companions, if you restrict your belief to how the Prophet believed and how he taught his companions, if you restrict your behavior to how the Prophet behaved and how he taught his companions, then you will be from this saved group. You will be from them. You know, before the time of the death of the Prophet now picture this and imagine this. Before he died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the last speeches he gave. Now imagine somebody that is, is dying, and you give your last piece of advice to your family and to the close ones and to people. You're not going to give them advice about business. You're not going to give them advice about get this degree or get that degree. You're not going to give them advice about follow this sports team or that sports team or this is important or this dunya matter is important. You're going to give them advice, hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, what will save them from the fire of hell. And that's exactly what the Prophet sallallahu did. He stood up and they gathered, hundreds upon hundreds. And he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, inni qad taraktu fikum ma in i'tasamtum bihi falan tadillu abadan. I have left you with something that if you hold on tightly to it, you will never, never go astray. Kitab Allahi wa sunnati. The book of Allah and my sunnah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He didn't mention a third thing. He didn't mention a fourth thing, a fifth thing, a sixth thing. He mentioned those two things. Made it easy for you. Follow the book of Allah, that which is clear in it, and the majority of the Quran is clear. Tawheed is clear. To worship Allah is clear. The way of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he prayed is clear. The way he believed is clear. Allah Azawajal did not legislate for you to study and become a rocket scientist in order to understand who he is. Allah did not legislate for you to study philosophy and Nietzsche and this one and that one in order to understand his names and his attributes. Never did he do that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made it clear upon you. 
When you read the Qur'an and you read the names and attributes of Allah, you take it for what it is. He made it clear that this is how you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Qur'an was revealed to a people, to the whole humanity, whether you are a rocket scientist or whether you have no education at all, it is meant to be understood by every single body on earth. That's why he said, I have left with you the Qur'an and my sunnah. You will never go astray if you follow these two matters. But we live in a time now where people have invented many things, many different types of worship. And this is a very serious matter and we need to wake each other up for this before we get swept by the fitna as well. You have groups of people and I'm speaking even for my people, meaning the Albanian people, which I was born into Albanian parents. SubhanAllah, when they pass away after three days, they gather together and they recite La ilaha illallah 70,000 times thinking it will benefit the person who passed away. Allahu Akbar. Did they come with something that Rasulullah didn't know about? Did they come with something that was better than what the Prophet showed them? Clear in a hadith what will help you after your death. One of them is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَنْهُ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثَةَ That when a human being dies, all of his deeds are cut off except for three matters. And you know what he mentioned, إِلَّا مِنْ صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيَةٍ Except for a continuous charity that you have left behind. أَوْ عِلْمٌ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ Or some kind of عِلْمٍ أَوْ مِنْ عِلْمٍ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ Or some kind of knowledge that you left behind that people are benefiting from. أَوْ وَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُوا لَهُ Or a righteous child you have left behind who makes dua for that person who has passed away. Clear. But people have... Shaitan has swept them up into thinking there are other ways better than the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Never. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have left you with two things. We need to hold on to these. We need to hold on to these. You have people even in this time, SubhanAllah, they gather together to celebrate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birthday. If that was such a good thing, how come we don't find in, in some, the ulama, they say 600 years, six centuries after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it never existed where groups of people would gather together and to celebrate his birthday. And it has turned into festivals and partying. The Sahaba were not like this. They knew the deen better than we knew because they followed the Qur'an and they followed the Prophet ﷺ. They lived with him, they learned from him. So if they didn't do it, there is no khayr in it. If they did it, there is khayr in it. So this is why the Prophet ﷺ told us, and alhamdulillah, and I say Alhamdulillah with all in depths of my heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never leave this ummah misguided without sending them people to teach them. And we know this from a hadith on Muawiyah radiallahu anhu where he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said لا تزالوا, لا تزالوا طائفة من أمتي قائمة بأمر الله that there will always be, the meaning is there will always be a group of people in my ummah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, who will stand for and who will, who will apply the commandments of Allah. And then he said, لا يضرهم من خلف من خذلهم ولا من خالفهم. Those who abandon them. And those who oppose them will not harm them in the least bit. Hatta yet tia amrullah until the command of Allah comes. Wahum zahiruna ala nas, and they ascend over the people, or they become victorious over the people. What does this hadith show us? We don't follow prop, uh, popular trends. We don't follow what the majority are upon here or over there. None of that means anything to us. None of that, because obviously in this hadith. It will mean that these people will not have victory over the people at some times. Until Allah brings that command. But there will always be that group of people teaching the people the haqq. When the people are engulfed in shirk, they return them to tawheed. They try their best to call the people back to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
when the people are going to the graves of so-called saints and they rub their, gra their graves for barakah and seeking their blessings and seeking to get closer to Allah by doing such things. When the people ask those graves, yeah, so-and-so in the grave, help me in this, help me in that. When they see the people doing this, and this is from the greatest of all sins, they go to the people and they teach them the tawheed and who Allah is and try their best to get them back on track. When they see the people involved in innovations after innovations, they teach the people of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it doesn't matter who abandons them and it doesn't matter who opposes them. All that matters to them is the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if Allah grants you victory in your da'wah, then Allah grants you victory. If He doesn't grant you victory, you say, Alhamdulillah, at least I'm doing the deeds that please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. This week, someone passed away in my community where I'm Imam at and my masjid. So the, the, the people, they come to me and they said, oh, after the third day, we need you to come. You are the Imam. You have to lead this affair of reciting La ilaha illallah in a group, in a unison with the people 70,000 times for that person. I said, I will never do this. They said, you are the ma Imam. You have to lead the people in this. I said, I have to lead the people into what Rasulullah led his people with. So they began talking this and that. It doesn't matter, alhamdulillah. As long as I'm upon and we're upon what Rasulullah was upon. One of them, he stood up and he said, you have came with a new religion. New religion. Because they have practiced this for hundreds of years. So he said, you have came with a new religion. And when I tell you, my heart became so happy with that statement. Why did it become happy? Because of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا In another riwayah, إِنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ بَدَأَ غَرِيبًا فَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاءِ Islam started as something strange, something new. People were amazed. What is this? What are they practicing? They're calling us against the religion of our forefathers and the way our, our parents practiced the religion? Never. It was strange to them. And Rasulullah indicated and he said it will return to being something strange, meaning close to the day of judgment. To where when you even practice Islam the way it's supposed to be practiced, the people will look at you strange. What is this? And we see now even with our, our, our sisters, may Allah bless them and guide them and protect them. Ameen with the fashions of different hijabs. It has become a, a fashion statement now, hijab. The haya, the modesty, is missing from many of our sisters, subhanAllah. And it's a trend. And nowadays when you cover properly, and you cover your bodies in the way that's pleasing to your creator, you are looked at as strange. Now, this person is extreme, this is something new. We don't know about this because everyone is used to the new trends. But this hadith, it shows us that we're not worried about trends. We're worried about following the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا فَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا And it will return to being something strange. فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَا And some of the ulama say, طُوبَ is a tree in Jannah. So the meaning here is glad tidings of Jannah for those who are the strangers. We want to be strangers. It's good to look different, to grow your beards. It's good to have your pants above the ankles. It's good to stand out from those who disbelieve. This is something khair that Allah is pleased with because you are imitating and trying to follow your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what he came with. We are not trying to follow Bill and John and Steve and all these other people. Our goal is to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we do this, then definitely, definitely we will be from amongst those strangers. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that he makes us from the people of Jannah. Ameen. And the reason why I'm, I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart first, to, to, I, I want to save myself first. And then second, I want to remind you all, especially the youth here, you have to stick to and hold on tightly that which is clear in the Qur'an and clear in the Sunnah of the Prophet Is it clear that dua to Allah is the most important thing? Is that clear? Is dua allowed to other than Allah? It's not allowed. Is that clear? Very clear, right? Don't ever let someone come and fool you into thinking different. 
Don't ever let someone come and say, yes, but that person who died in the grave, as long as the person who is asking him doesn't think that that person is actually Allah or he has some special powers independent of Allah. Don't pay no mind into this. These are from the tricks of shaitan trying to get you to get closer and closer into shirk. What is clear, you stick to it and never deviate, subhanAllah. In the way of the Prophet وسلم, many of the ahadith are very clear, such as those that I just read. Follow his way, follow what is clear from his teachings and you will be saved. Is philosophy obligatory upon us? Do we have to f f uh, study philosophy to know who Allah is? Who believes that we have to study philosophy to know who Allah is? If anyone believes that, then, then tell me which uh, companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam traveled to gain knowledge from the Greeks or the Romans in the field of philosophy. Anyone? No. Subhanallah. Stick to that which is clear and you will be saved on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Do you know on the Day of Judgment, do you know the Hald of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who knows what the Hald is from the youth? Raise your hand if you know. I'll give you a hint. Like a pond or a lake of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Huh? Kawthar, very, very good. Very good. What Allah promised the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why did he promise him al kawthar Do you remember what event happened? What? His son died, Allahu Akbar. Yes. Very good, mashallah. Some of the, the mushrikeen started mistreating him. Very good. And they started to insult him and they considered it a good thing. So what do they say? It's because his son died, what do they say? Yeah, he will leave nothing behind, meaning Islam will die with him, since he has no one that will inherit him. They were thinking like kingship. You know, your son is going to inherit and it's going to continue like that. So Allah promised Al-Kawthar. Al-Kawthar has few meanings here. One is abundance of good, of course. And the other one is the lake that Allah promised him in Jannah. And Shaykh Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, he says about this lake that it comes from two streams, like two rivers in Jannah. And they drain in one place, and from that drain forms this lake. Anyhow, on the day of judgment, after a hot, and you know how hot it will be in the day of judgment, you know how close the sun will be. People will be gathered around the lake of the Prophet Sallallahu Muslims, ready to drink. A group of angels will come and push some of them back. SubhanAllah. Imagine Rasulullah saw something, and these are from my ummah, what will happen? It will be told to him, you don't know what they invented after you. The people who followed other than Rasulullah's way but claimed it was part of Islam. And if you notice, the heads of all the astray groups, all their major call, each and every single one of them, is something that is ambiguous. They will find a hadith, they will find an ayah that is not too clear. Not too clear. And they will purposely bend that ayah or bend that hadith into their favor in order to support some deviance that they are doing. All of them do this. Ahlul Sunnah, what do we do? We follow that which is clear from the Quran and that which is clear from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you hear a group of people always saying, Qala Allah wa Qala Rasul, then you know that this is a good sign. So my reminder for today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, is just exactly that, that we want to be from the saved group. Not so that we can be arrogant and look down upon others. Not that at all. But we want to be eager to do the good of that group, what they did during the time of the Prophet wasallam, And to follow their way. Just as the Prophet wasallam said about that characteristics of that group, مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ الْيَوْمُ وَأَصْحَابِي that which I am upon today and which my companions are upon as well, subhanAllah. I ask Allah that He makes us from that, from that group of people, ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He unites us all in Jannah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to drink from his lake, ameen ya Rabb, ameen. May Allah protect us, protect our offspring all the way to Yawm al-Qiyamah, ameen ya Rabb, ameen. Barakallahu feekum, but before, before I finish, 
because we have very young students of knowledge here with their pens and their notepads. Does anyone remember what I mentioned last week, huh? Who studies? Yes. Allahu Akbar. The four things that every Muslim has to go through the stages. What are they? One. Seeking knowledge. Two. Uh, use that knowledge. Apply that knowledge. But before that, what three things of knowledge? We have to know who. Nella, what are the three questions of the grave? We have to know who. Allah. Yes. His religion and his prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Very good. And two, you said was to follow that. <coughs> Put it into practice. What was three? Teach other people and spread it. Make da'wah. After you collect yourself and you start practicing. Very good. And what's the fourth thing? You have to have patience with all the trials that will come to you. You have to have patience with all the trials that come to you. Anyone remember, besides these two, from the youth, what surah backs all of that up? Yes. Surah Asr. Recite Surah Asr for us. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah, Tabarak Allah. May Allah Azza wa Jal preserve all of you. Ameen, Ya Rab. Such a beautiful thing. Such a beautiful thing. And with that note, inshallah ta'ala, my, my part and my reminder is over. I hope that Allah Azza wa Jal makes it a means of benefit for all of us. And whatever, you know, mistakes that I made, uh, definitely that is from shaitan and myself. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khairan shaykhan.